Most agents that I ever talk to, that I ever hear from, that even buy our leads are doing it wrong. And I'm going to take some time today to show you the top five reasons of why you're doing things wrong, the top five things that agents do wrong, that you're probably doing wrong, that we need to spend a little time together, probably about 12, 15 minutes together, so that we can tell, show you what you're doing wrong so that moving forward you can fix it. The number one reason why agents are calling leads incorrectly. I, I think if, if I, I had to rank these earlier today, Dylan and I sat down, we always prep for the show some, most of the time. Number one reason Agents try to get too much information. Agents try to, when you're calling leads, you generally, what happens is you generally try to quote them, give them quotes, give them prices, ask what they can afford, ask if they already have anything, ask their interest level, ask, ask about their health, if they smoke, height and weight. You ask too much. It does not matter and it is irrelevant because the goal is to sit down with the prospect. Something I'm gonna go over in a little bit. You gotta, the goal is to sit down with the prospect. But agents are used to giving way too much information. And if that's the goal, then hey, let's sit down with the prospect. Then do whatever it takes to sit down with the prospect without complicating it or making it complex or confusing them. An agent wrote in the other day and said, hey, dude, I, you know, some of the leads that I call, they think it's free. I don't typically hear that because of the way that I work my script and the things that I say. These are the five things that agents are doing in from the thing that they're doing most wrong, that's most important not to do, all the way down to the least important. So that's number one, too much information. It's irrelevant. Don't get it. It's too much. Stick to the script. Person answers the phone, John. Hey, this is Cody getting back to you about the new state regulated final expense information. Hey, I'm the local field underwriter. I've been assigned to your area and I'll be in your area on Friday. Should I drop this information off? What do you think? In the morning or in the afternoon? Where in that did I ask about their health? Where in that did I ask if they already had anything? Where in that did I ask how much they could afford? Where in that did I ask anything other than when I can drop something off? Nothing because it's irrelevant. And if you're doing that and your manager's telling you to do that, then stop and make sure I talk to your manager because I'm gonna set that straight. That's number one. Number two reason that you're calling leads incorrectly is that you're not finishing with a question, especially over the phone. I do not believe in saying anything unless I finish with a question. I don't believe in speaking over the phone unless I finish with a question. I know that's rough. I know that's hard. I know for agents that are used to just blabbing everywhere and puking on people, I know that's difficult to comprehend. But I need to keep things concise and finish with questions. I'm telling you, it works. It works for me. It's worked for others. And it will work for you too. You do not say anything over the phone without finishing with a question because this keeps you in control every step of the way. At the end of the day, the goal all these things align with the goal. The goal is to sit down with someone. The goal is to sit with them. The goal is not even to make a sale. The goal is to sit with them and hopefully you'll make a sale, but at least you had the opportunity and you can't get opportunities if you don't sit with them. That's reason number two, you don't finish with a question. Start to finish with a question every single time. All right, reason number three, this one's big. This one's pretty common. Agents pause at the wrong times. They pause without asking a question. Instead, what you should be doing, because I'll give you a perfect example. You call a prospect and 95% and of you that are watching right now are making this mistake. Hey, this is John Smith with uh, The Insurance Group. Hey, you, looks like you went online and, and said uh, that you wanted a quote for life insurance. And then you pause. And by doing that, the only thing that you are doing, and you're making the mistake right now, we're going to fix it. But, what, but when you do that and you say that phrase, and that's what you all say because you don't know what to do. And that's my fault. I'll, I'll take blame. When that happens, though, what's going on is you are saying, Miss, Miss Betty, Mr. John, prospect, please insert an objection right here, right now, please. 
go ahead, you insert the objection, I'll wait, I'll hold. It's insane. It's ridiculous, and I don't want you doing it anymore. Man, I used to do it too. First few years of my career, I didn't understand all this stuff. I really didn't. It took me till, uh, honestly, I probably didn't even understand all this stuff until I started generating leads for people, and then I started calling them and practicing and working it and making and perfecting a system that works for people so that not only could I give leads to agents, but I could also tell them, I could give them leads and tell them what to do that works, and then believe it or not, if you have leads and you have something that actually works and you put the two together, guess what? You sit with people, you have success, and you make money. So that's why we do these things. Number three was pause, gosh. I don't pause just to make it keep it simple so that I can like break this down. I don't pause unless I until after after I ask a question. That's it. Number four. Reason number four, you guys ready? You ready for number four? Number four is pretty big too. And you don't even know that number four exists, probably. I would say 99% of insurance agents do this one wrong. This one's big. Number four is a poor intro. Agents have a poor intro. What does that mean? That means that you don't take command of the call and I'm gonna say this. One thing that immediately happens is the person says, hello, and you the agent, what do you say? I'll give you a few examples. Is this Betty Smith? Hello, I'm looking for Betty. Hi, I'm, I'm, looks, like I, looks like I'm looking for Betty. Hi, I'm supposed to ask for Betty. Hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I need Betty Smith, please. All of these things that let you, that, that, and what that does is, you are telling the prospect that you do not know who they are, and you're not even sure that you're calling the right person right now. It's a mistake, and, it, and it's a bad mistake because it's so early in the call that the rest of the call, you can still set appointments, but it makes the rest of the call tougher. It's an uphill sled. Instead, you say, well, Cody, that's what I've been trained to do. That's all I ever do. What should I do? We'll just say that Betty answers the phone. Hello? Maybe in a more female voice than that, but they say hello. You say, Betty. It's confident. You know that it's them. And you just say their first name. And you, then you're in control and you get the call started the way you want to get it started. Because, and you say, well, dude, what, what if it's, what if, you know, the lead says Betty Smith and the hus husband answers? Mr. Smith. That's it, Mr. Smith. And then if you need to ask for Betty, that's fine, but I'm gonna roll with it. The poor, poor intro is number four. Are you guys ready for number five? Number five is, number five is something that I would say, this is the one that I've generally always done pretty well, which is selling a drop-off time. If the goal is to get in front of someone and selling a drop-off time is gonna make it easiest for you to do that, then sell a drop-off time. I get a lot of agents to say, well, dude, you're selling a drop-off time, and then you get to the home, and the prospect, well, what are they going to say? I thought you were dropping it off. Like, like, what do you say or what do you do when you get to the home? They forget. They don't remember everything you say. They forget that you were ever dropping something off. If you say, well, what information would you drop off? Dude, I would drop off me. I am the information, and I'm going to provide the information to them, and leave it with them if that's what they need. But at the end of the day, the goal is to sit with a prospect and selling a drop-off time is the best way to do it. If you're not doing it, you're making a mistake. Sell a drop-off time. For instance, I just said it earlier. This is Cody. I'm getting back to you about the new final expense information. Now, John, I'm the local field underwriter. I've been assigned to your case. I'll be out in your area on Friday. Should I drop this information off? Should I drop this information off in the morning or in the afternoon? That's it. And about 80% of the time, they're going to pick one. And then you're going to say, they're going to say afternoon, and you're going to say, great, uh, let me look at my calendar. Okay, it looks like I have a 2 o'clock or a 4 o'clock. Which is better? And, and, and anybody can do this. You can say this exact same thing. Most people just don't because... 
we're lazy, we don't know what to do, we've been taught to do all these things incorrectly. So I'm going to run through those again real quick one more time. Number one, you try to get too much information. Jeez. Number two, you don't finish with a question. Number three, you pause at the wrong times. Don't pause unless you ask a question. Number four, it's a poor intro. You start the, I mean, the, the whole call is shot. And number five, you don't sell a drop-off time. If the goal is to sit down with the prospect, let's, let, let's, do it, let's play a little game real quick. If the goal is to sit down with the prospect, does giving them too, too much information make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does... Not finishing with a question. Make it harder for you to sit down with them. Yes. Does pausing at the wrong times make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does starting poorly with an in poor intro make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Does not selling a drop-off time make it harder for you to sit down with them? Yes. Then don't, don't do them. If the goal is to sit down with them and these things will get you in front of them, then do them and implement them into your calls. Because at the end of the day, the only reason we do all of this is to help you, the audience watching, the agents that are doing great, struggling, making 18 grand in a year, making 48 grand in a year, making 92 grand in a year, making 260 grand in a year, making 782 grand in a year, or $12 million a year. The reason we do what we do is to help insurance agents be great at getting in front of people and the goal is to sit down with them these things make it easier for you to sit down with them if you do the opposite if you don't do these things incorrectly and you actually do them correctly also something that is coming up pretty quick is christmas i'm going to finish with something that agents ask a lot about which is hey dude what days should i work you sh you can work you should work every day coming up about midday on Christmas Eve, you could technically stop running appointments and stop making calls about midday. And then you can take off Christmas, don't run appointments, don't make calls. And then the 26th, you're back at it. So most of these are run days. They really are uh, days that you can get out in the field, uh, make calls, set appointments, do these things, follow these things, and have success. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Thanks so much for watching 8% Club. Have a great weekend. Hope you have an awesome Christmas. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. I truly believed as well in our business, this, the most successful people are doing the same thing every week. What's your thoughts on, on having a system of success? Want me to preach on that? Let's do it, bro. I'd love to hear it, man. Yeah, so the thing is, is that you have to think about insurance.